Yeah, it's so off-brand for me, but uh, but a, a little bit different than maybe some of the conversations we've had in the past. I do not consider myself a disbeliever. Um, I fully believe that uh, the, the Warriors story has not been written yet. Um, it, it has not been written yet. I think there's going to be some different stuff coming down the pike when we get to the playoffs, if the Warriors get to the playoffs, whatnot. But, like, that's just kind of how it felt last night. Great. You, you you beat the Wizards. You should beat the Wizards. But why are you playing this way? And and the truth is probably in the middle of what you and I were just saying in the hallway as to whether the Warriors are different or is the league different with the way it goes about defending right now. I think it's both. And uh, the league is a lot different in terms of pace. If you look at the pace numbers and you watch any NBA game, it's a lot more up and down and back and forth. And maybe it's the league rules and the way that the game is trending where offense has such a big advantage and you know you've got officials who are told to you know clamp down on all kinds of contact and you get more fouls and more free throws than ever before that's the way the game is going but you look at the way the warriors play and too many nights you see bad defense and you see a team that gives up too many open shots too many turnovers too many careless fouls. They're second in the league in turnovers. They're second in the league in fouls committed. And so it is the league playing a lot faster, but it's also the Warriors playing faster. They are the highest team in terms of pace in the association. And also they don't play a lot of great defense. So I think it's two things that are equally true. Shout out Ralph Barbieri. But in this case, I think it's more the Warriors' defense is just bad. Yeah, it's good to see Wiggs uh, play the way that he did. That's going to be a big, big part of it. And it's not for me even hitting threes and putting up big points. It's it's that aggressiveness that we're always looking for. It's crashing offensive boards. His athleticism is so fantastic. He's a beautiful freaking basketball player when he when he adds in that effort. He is just an unbelievable basketball player. So to see that, it's all very encouraging. And if you do go back to last year, remember, our, our faith and our thought was kind of in the same spot in February. Maybe it was a little higher than this because it was a, a team that was fighting for a top three seed, and this team is just fighting, period. So um, maybe optimism a little bit lower this year, but I'm just tr I'm trying to figure out, and I don't know who it is on planet Earth that would even answer this question, Draymond, Atkinson, Kerr, Myers. I have no idea who would even give a straight answer. Right. But, like, wh what what happened? You know, James from Tip Talk was over here a few weeks ago. What happened? <laughs> totally. What happened? Why why are you out here uh, all of the sudden overnight, and, and you just went individual by individual, and went, well, each of them are worst defenders. Can we just say that? In nine months? Everybody physically suddenly got worse? That's weird to me. It's weird, but it also, what we've talked about many, many times in terms of defense, defense takes effort and motivation. And right now, as a group, they haven't shown that they are as motivated to play defense now as they were last April, May, and June. And it's easy to look at Andrew Wiggins as example one because the way he played in the Western Conference Finals and the NBA Finals was good enough to lift this team to a championship. He was their second best player in the NBA Finals, and some thought if it wasn't for Steph Curry in Game 4 in Boston, he might have been the NBA Finals MVP. He was playing at a whole nother level, and I know he's been injured this year with the adductor strain and the non-COVID illness, but Andrew Wiggins himself has not been the same player defensively. Klay Thompson has been okay. He's been great offensively. Defensively, he's not the same on-ball guy that he once was. Steph Curry's never been a great defender. Jordan Poole's playing more minutes, and he is a virtual turnstile on defense. <laughs> Kevon Looney is sturdy, but he's largely limited on defense, and Draymond can't do it all alone. And then you go to the bench, you don't have GP2. Dante DiVincenzo, he's a good defender, but he's not locked down by any stretch of the imagination. You've got no rim protection, and the numbers tell you all you need to know. You're giving up a much higher percentage from the floor defensively than you did last year. You foul more, you give more possessions because you turn it over and you play fast, and all those things add up to you being a bad defense. Yeah, I, it's just, it's, it's so fascinating to me. It's all still sitting there for them. I know, you know, oh, they're the nine seed. 
A game and a half out of the four seed. Game and a half out. It's all still sitting there for them. And oh, by the way, uh, just a quick check-in. This is a small sample. I'm not doing a victory lap yet. But everybody who went, well, Dallas and Phoenix are now going to be impossible to beat. Uh, Dallas has lost two in a row. Right. And they're giving up 1,000 points a game also. <laughs> it's simple. Why over the last two years have I sat here across this table from you and our lovely friend Joe Spadone is sitting in the other room over there with his Laker fandom? Why do you think I have been able to so roundly dismiss the Los Angeles Lakers every time there's somebody at the corner of a bar or getting their hair cut? You know, if AD and LeBron get healthy at the right time, Oh, you don't want to play that Laker. Yeah, you do. They stink because they don't guard. They are right next to the Warriors in terms of opponent points per game. It's a very simple math equation. It's it, it's 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 Rocky. It's Adrian. You can't win. <laughs> nice. You can't win this way. Do you know that the Warriors give up more points per game than the Houston Rockets? Man, it's bad. It's gross. It's gross. It's not the stuff that we sit down and watch. I had my remote control. I had a beverage. Sweet. Wiggins is playing, man. Clay's playing. Jordan's playing. They're entertaining, but this style of basketball is is it's elementary. It's 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 simplistic. It's just as you said, it's not right. They're not playing the game the way that you win. Right. The way that they can possibly win. It's very difficult in the playoffs to go out and beat teams 130 to 129 and do that four times in a series where you've got teams with offensive firepower that can match you. And if you talk about defenses in the Western Conference that you might end up facing, you got the Clippers and Phoenix are better defensive teams than you. Almost everybody in the West is clearly better than you defensively. So even when you get Steph Curry back and you get the high-octane offense going, you get the three-guard offense with Jordan Poole in the starting lineup, things definitely squeeze down in the playoffs where you got to be able to stop teams if you're going to win series. And this team has always done it with at least a pretty good defense. Like last year, they were an elite defense, which is why they won the chip. They've never won a championship without being one of the top five or six defensive teams. Like the only when you look at the Western Conference right now, um, the only because I already mentioned Denver is one of the Denver's the second best defensive team in the NBA. Memphis, I think, is sitting there at about five or six. They're good enough. They both give up about 112 points per game. The one team that's bucking this system, and it's why I will continue. This isn't being a hater. This is why I will continue to say that the Kings. This is a nice setup year. Next year, the year after that, is when the Kings can actually have an imprint on an NBA season. Because this year, what they're doing is they're the three seed by outscoring everybody. They're prolific offensively. They love to light the beam. They're also giving up north of 117 points a game. When you bring that defense and a lack of experience into the playoffs, you're going to get beat. You're, you're going to get beat, right. especially with the way the Western Conference is now. Like in the first round, if they do get a Clippers or a Suns, they're going to get beat, in my opinion, because of their style. But they're only in a certain arc in their growth. So that, to me, is much more understandable and acceptable. And they're making it work with their prolific offense. They're eight games over five hundred. The Warriors, on the other hand, they know better. That's why this is so confusing to me. I'm not saying anything that the Warriors don't know. They know this. They built this. Right. This is how they built their dynasty. And 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 now, it, whether it's because they won't or they can't, same conversation we had yeah, a couple we had, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. And whether it's because they won't or they can't, um, they, they're going against their own system. And I think it's more that they can't as opposed to they won't. But part of it, too, Mark, is their offense has been their worst defense this year because you're playing so fast and you're relying on the three ball. So like you said, last night you go 20 of 40 from three, 60 points from behind the line. That's a game that the old Warriors win by 18 to 25, going away comfortable. You're lighting it up from three. You're never in doubt. But this team, they play fast. They're loose with the basketball. You foul so much that you give other teams free points from the free throw line, and you go 20 of 40 from three-point range, and you didn't have to hold on to win 
But you had to hang a buck thirty yeah, in order just, to get a win on a Monday night, and they were annoying, right? They like that's yeah, hanging around, hanging totally. around every fourth quarter. I sit there and watch the Warriors hanging around, and 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 it's led to some losses. I mean, think about that. If you just took half of the Warriors' blown fourth quarter leads and 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 gave the Warriors, you know, three or four of those this year, look where they'd be in the standings. Look where they'd be in the standings. They'd be the three seed if they just even had a small handful of the games that they've blown. And I'm sure the other teams feel that way, too. Uh,